Um, I have put a note at the bottom of the second page, um, which is a, a reference to Burkhoff. Uh, it's worth looking at that. Um, you will, I'm, I'm sure that Pastor Noah will do a, a more detailed thing on, on dispensationalism if you haven't already come to that. Um, and that, that's one of the reasons why I haven't spent a lot of time uh, in, in that. Um, I have this, this one on dispensational is, is uh, I've been helped by my very good friend, Dr. Julian Zug, um, who um, works for the, um, I don't know if you've heard of it, but the Mintz Foundation um, in America, which is helping to train pastors all over the world um, with their theological courses. Um, I emailed him this week because I previously gave a link uh, to um, a website or a, a, some a PDFs that he had produced on covenant theology, which is helpful. Um, unfortunately, that website is down at the moment, and I emailed him to let him let to ask him uh, this week, but he hasn't let me know. Um, if he tells me, uh, gives me a link, um, I haven't had a reply from him yet. Uh, I'll give you the link later, um, um, and then you can look at his um, his thing on dispensational and covenant theology, which is quite helpful. But he will cover it in greater detail with uh, with Pastor Noel, and that's why I don't want to take a lot of time with it now. Um, and now there is another question here, which um, uh, Pastor Dennis, can you shed some light about Philippians two thirteen? Philippians 2.13. Sorry, I don't, I've only just seen that. Um, uh, just let me get that in my mind, which verse that is. I suspect I know which verse it is, but let me just be sure. Uh, yes. Um, it, so, uh, sorry, my slight smile. Um, yeah, that, that will take me longer, longer to deal with now than I can deal with. But, but I would just say that, that you must take verse 12 of Philippians 2 in, in context with Philippians 13 and see the whole development of Paul's arguments. Some of the confusion that has arisen by Philippians 2.13 and a number of other verses. There's a verse in Peter and one or two other verses People take them out of context. They just they extract the verse and say, oh, I have a problem with this verse. But they don't actually look at it in context. Um, what is Peter doing? He's talking. What is what is Paul doing here? He is talking to believers. He is encouraging them to go on with the Lord. Verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Now, he's not telling us that we are saved by our working out our salvation. He's talking to believers who are not living as they ought to live. And he's saying, if you're going to show that you're genuinely born again, what you do, your works, it's not that your, your works save you, your faith, it's in, faith in, in the work of God. But the result of that uh, is to show by your life, by the, what you do in your, in your work, that you are truly born again. Uh, it's the old thing that, that the old saying that um, that um, uh, to save the the cost of sal uh, salvation is free, and it is by grace, but it demands of us everything, and it's that balance that is there. And he's in that context. He says, "For it is God who works in you, because you can't do it in your own strength. Even the best Christian cannot live." in the light of God without God's help, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. pleasure. That, that's, that's a very, very brief, very brief and very sketchy. Uh, there's much more in that than that, but, but um, I'm going to leave it there because we need to, we need to get on. But um, thank you for the question. It's, it, these are good questions, but, but look at it in context. That's the big issue that you need to take. Uh, okay, right. So let's uh, turn now to Genesis uh, 15 and verses 1 to 21, particularly which.